together. I'm putting in the butter and I'm gonna put in a little bit more vanilla. You're gonna see, I, Deb, Deb Snyder and I were talking about, um, we don't use recipes a lot. So like a little more butter went in this time. I mean, a little more vanilla, sorry. <laughs> That's it. So, here is the end. That's the whole thing. And it's in here. And then I take, uh, 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 okay, on the spatula. Uh oh. Wouldn't you know, I can't find my, but I have this. So you just want to flatten it. You can flatten it with your hands. You can flatten it with, um, what do they call those spatulas that actually are flat? There's a name for them. Flatulas? <laughs> That's why we have you on the show, Benjamin. Yeah, yeah it's definitely not for my cooking because I'm just- Oh, there. you know spatulas. And that's it. What? What'd you say, Lois? Offset spatula. I, that's it. That's it. Um, so this is it. You, I don't want to press it too much, but you want it because you want it flaky. The other thing, you know, Benjamin asked, like jalapenos, no, definitely not. But the other thing I've thought about is cinnamon. And even I would, you could sprinkle like cinnamon. Too risky. On that too and, risky. And, what? Too risky with the cinnamon. <laughs> anyway. There's my biscuits. You'll see them at the end of the show. And unfortunately, you can't taste them through Zoom. But there you go. They're going in the oven. Uh, next, I think I'm going to hand it over to Shauna. Shauna's going to make some wonderful dishes for, uh, for breakfast vegetarian because I like vegetarian. Go Shauna. So um, I'm the non-vegetarian making, I guess, the vegetarian. Um, I didn't know I was labeled that way. But usually um, I've been doing a big break the fast for many, many years. And so it's kind of nice to do this with y'all because I can't um, actually have that many people over. But I'm a control freak. Uh, and so um, I know that might be shocking to some of you. But I'm a control freak. And therefore, I try to make a lot of things so it's all there's a nice spread and I actually only let people bring dessert because that's what people want to bring anyhow because it's easy for them and so then that comes later so um so what did you want me to make first Benjamin I mean I would start with the the mock liver I mean it's okay more dynamic so, oh, chop liver I um when I was a um comes from Lisa Nelson who uh was in charge of uh single membership at Wise LA a long time ago. And, um, and it was done before veganism. So there is eggs in there, okay? And it's like, and really I have to say the egg is important, okay? <laughs> so, um, and the other important parts of faux chopped liver is when you make chopped liver, it's the onions, it's the garlic, it's the, you know, all of that. So Shauna, do you, do you like regular chopped liver? So I do like regular chopped liver. Who else liver. here? Raise your hand if you like regular chopped liver. And right, doesn't it, don't you guys wonder why people are like, what am I, chopped liver? That should be a compliment. <laughs> Shouldn't it be a compliment? So it shouldn't be a denigration. It should be an elevation, which is perfect for this, our elevation series. Sorry, yeah. Sean, I go ahead. So I love that you're bringing something for people that maybe aren't want, wanting something a little healthier, right. a little so bit healthier, so at least so a little bit. Done to be healthier. So you make the lentils beforehand and you really can't see them because they're dark, but you make the lentils beforehand and you make it with vegetable stock 
And then if there is no vegetarian coming to your home, then make it with chicken stock and it's just, it's still healthier. And Shauna, and have you seen at Trader Joe's, they have the pre-made lentils. You can just get them already made and packaged. No, but you can't do that because they don't do see. It. The problem with pre-made lentils and pre-made, um, what is Chicken. it, quinoa, like they don't cook it down enough for my stomach. Okay, okay I see. <laughs> Break it down. Okay, and I see where you're you going. Know, my Thank kids you. get no it problem. too, yeah. Okay. okay, so you also have to saute with the olive oil, the onions down to translucency. Let me yeah. put this, um, maybe that's better. And, um, and so you do that ahead of time also. And I put a little garlic and this is where I put the salt and pepper in to taste. So like the recipe from Lisa Nelson, I'm just telling you, I take my own um, liberties. Um, she also has two eggs. But if you're using organic eggs, you gotta use three, okay? Cause they're smaller. And, um, and let me tell you Martha Stewart's secret to hard boiling eggs. It's very important so that they're nice and yellow inside. Uh, you only boil them for five minutes. Then you let them sit in the hot water for 10 minutes and then you empty it out. And it's not gray, they're beautiful yellow. I'm gonna show you. Very important, very important. Okay, beautiful yellow inside. Okay, so let's do this. Gorgeous, thank you. And that's such a good symbol also with the new year, the egg, yeah. rebirth. We love that, oh, Shauna. I never knew that trick. Thank you, Shauna. No problem. I'm here about efficiency, efficiency, because I do all of this in the afternoon before Yom Kippur. Yeah. Uh, afternoon before Yom uh, Kol Nidre, and then I do it like in two hours when I come home from services, and I don't make it to um, needle. Or okay, so and also this kitchen was not set up for this. So a cup of walnuts goes into the food processor, and you do that first because it makes it go fast. Then you. Throw then you throw the lentils and the onions that I talked about into the food processor. <laughs> and my lentils are a little dried out because quite frankly, I forgot about them at one point today. So I try to get them re-moisturized. You neglected your lentils. I neglected my lentils. You know, there's a lot going on. Um, and then the onions that really like, this is the stuff, right? Cause when you're in, I remember being in Israel and going, God, something smells so good. So I went up to the cart and I'm like, what are you cooking? Well, liver, chicken livers. I'm like, oh, but it's the onions, right? It's really, yeah. I love onions and I love when I mix garlic in and my husband goes crazy. Yes, I, I put the garlic in you don't have to, you get to play with that. Um, you get to play with this recipe as you want. And then you're gonna throw the egg in. And this is, um, let me cut them in cut them. Um, so does all the fat come from the olive onions oil. and the olive oil? The olive, oil. The olive oil, yeah. Because yeah. that's the thing. You need that kind of the fattiness. Hold it together. And I yeah. also like making this the night before because I like it like sitting in the refrigerator melting all the flavors. Um, I am definitely making this one this year. I, I like this idea. I know uh, that, you know, some people will make this out of peas. Well, green I will tell you, when I make this. A green peas. liver? Wow. Well, That's very I easy. You think you're not adventurous, like, but Linda, a green chopped liver is very progressive. This, people, I think it's really chopped liver. And I thought it was chopped liver when I first ate it. Like, I'm like, Lisa, this chopped liver is so great. And she's like, it's not chopped liver. And I'm like, oh my God. And so people, 
think they're eating chopped liver and they think they're cheating on their diet. It's awesome. You can also <laughs> do it with mushrooms. I like that, that earthiness. That would be smart. I love mushrooms too, yeah. Nancy, if you have a recipe too, or a link to one, people can drop in other recipes into the chat box so that we have additional access. Cause we know that so many of you have great recipes you work with. I don't have a recipe, it's just. Okay. Um, well, let me do that. Uh, we'll take what we can get. That was a great offering. It could also be Ben that, um, Benjamin that the onions, since they're sauteed and soft and mushy, adds to, gives them that body. That oh, yeah, because it's I would in think the oil. so. That yeah. is like those caramelized onions are like the essential ingredient, like especially when they're on top and you want a little bit of that. Have people had this? Um, I know I've had it with some of you. This, like, um, it's this Persian, it's like a Persian baba ganoush, and they put these caramelized onions on top, and it's so velvety and delicious. It's amazing. So I'm just going to show this to you quickly, and then you can. Um, this is not the plate. This, I know you want to like nicely plated. You can plate it at the end. We'll do oh, like a like a food so that's corn good. reveal at the end. Fabulous. Okay, yeah. so then the other. Um, so that's this. It looks really delicious. See. Okay. Um, and the next. I do, which is very, very easy because it's very important for me to have easy things um, because um, I want everything done. So this is the next is really equal parts of artichoke hearts, parts of palm. Say what the recipe is. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. This is marinated vegetable salad. Yeah. This is really easy. I only do easy. Okay. So, um, and uh, <laughs> Donna does. Shauna does like easy. Slice. Oh, Shauna. So I have to slice black I'm olives. Making a joke. What? I'm making a joke. Shauna okay. does easy or Costco. Yes, that's right. It's okay. I Without work phone. 60 hours a week. Okay, so this is so this is um a great thing. You put this on top of a can and you drain from the can. So you don't even need to dirty another thing. Awesome. Okay. So there goes the sliced olives. We quarter the artichoke hearts. You don't want them marinated, you want them plain. They come in a nice can in Trader Joe's. It's hard to find hearts of palm. They have it now. It's front and center at Trader Joe's. Front and yes, I just Trader got Trader Joe's them. has it. And sometimes Costco sells, sells them and you should buy them when they do. And do, when I was growing up, I felt like artichoke hearts and hearts of palm, they were so fancy. Were they fancy for everybody growing up? Yeah. Now they're like, more, it's yeah. like $2 for a can, but they were like kind of exotic. Like, I oh, guess because it was like palms and palm trees. What's um, that, Shauna? And well, I mean, I went, when I went to college, when I went to graduate school in DC, like people are like artichokes. You eat artichokes? I go yes. Here, let's prepare artichokes. And you know, um, so you throw in mushrooms. You slice up mushrooms. You slice up tomatoes. So it's Shauna, artichokes. are you combining it? I had this image that you had like a platter and you were doing like different oh, piles. Is, like, oh, but this is a together no, item, not a step. Not you're not segregating. You're anti segregation. You're <laughs> uniting them. I'm uniting them all. Okay. And the great thing about this salad is when you don't have any more room in your refrigerator because you've done all this prep or you have like the locks, the locks. Um, so here it is, like you can see, I got the artichoke hearts, the tomatoes, the Beautiful. mushrooms, the olives, um, hearts of palm, okay? And, all, and then you use your favorite balsamic vinaigrette. If you want to make it from scratch, God bless you. But my mother likes Paul Newman's balsamic life vinaigrette, and that is what we use. My grandmother used to have a framed photo of Ralph Lauren in the kitchen. <laughs> that was like her Paul Newman. She just like loved having Ralph Lauren around. And so you, you remember that, Mom? I you, you know, 
I use a little bit more than I would normally use because I want it to marinate. And so when your refrigerator's full and you just don't have any other room, you, you don't even have to put it back in the refrigerator. And I will tell you, you can eat this for leftovers for a couple of days, or it just gets better with time. Shauna, question. Point, it, huh? looks, it looks, we, it's hard for us to get the full beauty of it, but I, I can, I'm getting a sense of, do you ever just like hit that with a bunch of fresh herbs, like a dill and cilantro no. or parsley? Okay. So you obviously cook for a few people who you cherish. And I cook for about, I think, who's been, um, no one on here has been, so because sometimes I invite people in the neighborhood. Um, I don't know, Nancy, did you come once? Yes. So Nancy, I have about 40 to 50 people coming into my 1500 square foot condo. And I'm about efficiency, feeding them good food and getting them out. <laughs> Especially if it's a school night. They don't, they don't want to leave, Shauna. I know, Nancy, but you know, that's, that's the deal. So like, I do two egg dishes, one sweet, one savory. I have a whole bagel spread. I make sure there's a veggie and there's a fruit salad. I trust one person to bring a salad, you know, cause she's on time and, you know, comes out. And then I have another friend who knows the layout and can follow the, the map. So I'm, um, cause I, I told you I'm honest, I'm a control freak. Okay, so this is, um, so that is the easy mix vegetable marinade salad. And you can, um, it goes really well. It, you can make it early in the day. You could even make it the night before, but I put the mushrooms in the day of. That's it. Yeah, thank Love you. Love it, that was so good. Later, right? uh, I think we're ready for Deb. Deb is gonna bring it on home with her famous Kugel recipe that I'm really shocked that she let us in on the secret recipe I told her because I thought this was really a secret Lee recipe. Well, oh, Deb. Well, thanks. Um, not so secret. Uh, a matter of fact, I don't even know. My mom didn't serve this. I think, uh, I don't know if you all remember, but Temples would put out Jewish cookbooks. I think we even did one once. And this was from a cookbook I don't even have anymore because I, for a moment I almost forgot what was in this because I haven't made it in such a long time. So now you all have it. Now it's a reminder for me too. So this is super easy once again. So you're gonna go ahead and take your stick of butter. It's at room temperature. You put it in a bowl. I'm making right now the non-dairy version because I do have folks that are allergic to dairy and I'll make a dairy version as well. So I picked up today, uh, they typically have it at most grocery stores now, but this is what I used for the non-dairy cream cheese. It's oh. called Daya and um, it's a cream cheese spread. So non-dairy cream cheese spread. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the bowl with the butter, all right? And now I'm going to cream those two together with my mixer. That's it. You know, at Gelson's, they have, I think it's called Kite Hill, Kite Hill um, yeah, products. Two choices and and I they're just, really good non-dairy products. Yeah. I so heard, I, mean, I heard Gelson's was running out of dairy products around Rosh Hashanah. Oh, really? People were talking, people were that's talking at the, good. at Tashley, it's like Gelson's was like overrun. It was a madhouse. That's so. so, that's funny. Just like the toilet paper, I guess. Um, all right, and now we have, um, in this case, almond milk, because remember this is non-dairy, but you could use cashew milk, you could use regular milk, you could do the lesser um, calorie version if you wanted to use non-fat milk, fat-free cream cheese, but the way I see it is why do that? Um, we were, especially during break fast, you can indulge a little um, bit. Just and when, you know what I find is, is creamier than almond milk? You might want to try it, is oat milk. Yes, oat milk is good too. Absolutely, good suggestion. So two cups of that. That's what I couldn't remember, by the way. One cup of sugar. I do use baker's sugar, so um, it's a little finer. So that's what I used here. You ever try brown sugar or that? Not, no, no, no. This is, this is purely, yeah. Uh, that would be too healthy for this type of uh, recipe. <laughs> so okay, then, and then I did- yeah, different flavor. Yeah, four eggs. So once again, I'm gonna now beat that together. Okay, so 
Here we go. Very easy, right, so far. So these are all, this is basically your marinade. And you just want to get it so it's all mixed together evenly. Nothing special, just like what you would do with cake batter, right? You're going to have some, it won't, the cream cheese or the cream cheese, non-dairy cream cheese still doesn't mix completely, but that's fine. So then this is kind of, I guess, I think the secret of this, and that is that I use, and this isn't a secret, but just so you know, I use the Manischewitz wide egg noodles, and I already um, went ahead and boiled the noodles, and I'm gonna just go ahead and put this in this mixture right here. Thanks, Deb. I love that the blender looks like the one that Liz stole from her grandmother. Oh yeah, no, it, my, I don't have, you guys were talking about food processors and stuff, I'm like, I don't have any of that. I'm like total old school, whatever. So anyway, um, so then I'm just going to take these noodles and I'm putting it in the mixture, right? And then you're going to marinate the noodles. So that's what I think the secret is of this recipe is that by going ahead and just folding in then this nice creamy sugar, buttery, yummy deliciousness, you're going to go ahead and just marinate the noodles. And in this case, I will be marinating this until uh, breakfast at Allison's house um, on, on uh, when is that? That's Thursday. So these probably will be really, really good by that time. Um, but no, so I don't think it makes a difference, but it does, it does uh, soak in the flavor, I think. And then it ends up puffing up a bit like a souffle. So after you take these out, I'm not gonna do this now because I, like I said, I, I'm trying to also be efficient of what I'm gonna be making later this week. I'm gonna make a regular one as well. But I just went and I picked up, especially if you're bringing something to someone's house, it's much easier. I know it's not good for the environment, but one of these little tin guys so that you can leave it there. You don't have to worry about it. And then I don't know about you all, but there's something about Jewish cooking that has to include uh, Lipton onion soup and cornflakes. I'm not sure why. I think it's just a thing for all of us. It's just what we do. So I have some cornflakes and I'm going, oh, you know what? Wait a minute. So sorry. I forgot to put in some, I, I don't do this. Like, Can you do this? She thinks like I'm a pro or something. I'm really not. Uh, yeah, a teaspoon of vanilla. So you, I'll did, make you did cinnamon already? I have not done cinnamon. I'm going to explain that in just a moment. That seems so important for like the absorbing flavor. It is. Noodles, it is. is it? So what happens is, so then you're going to put, you're going to put the mixture into your pan, right? You're going to take your cornflakes and you're going to take some sugar. Once again, I did not measure. I just put some in this little bowl and I'm going to stick that in there. And then I'm going to take some cinnamon and I'm going to go ahead and just, I don't know, just make it so that it looks like there's a combination of the sugar and the cinnamon. I'm sure you all can figure that out. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the baggie and What's that wonderful thing? Uh, and then you can go ahead. Hi, honey. Want to say hi to everyone at Leo Beck Temple? Um, there's Barry. Hey, Barry, it is. Right, it's not yeah. close. No, it's not. Close. All right. It is. It, yeah, we don't read on things now because of COVID. So, all right. So then you're just going to crunch this all up. You have your sugar and your cinnamon mixed in. So that's where you get the cinnamon, Benjamin. So then you sprinkle it on top. And if you are want some more cinnamon, you could put a little bit more cinnamon on top of the cornflake mixture. Put a, don't put too much sugar because it's already really sweet as it is. So you could just add a little bit more and cinnamon. No, no, cinnamon in, no cinnamon in the mixture. No. Mm -mm. Wow. There's cinnamon in the mixture. It, it soaks in from the top. So then top down look, cinnamon, top down top cinnamon. Down, Got top it. down. Yep. Top down. So um, Robin then, doesn't like that. She likes cinnamon from the grassroots up. That's her well, model. you know, you could, you could go crazy. I, it's okay. I think you, you be you. And if you want to put some cinnamon in this first, I'm sure it won't hurt the recipe. So then when you put your cornflakes on top, then I take just little dabs of butter because you know, everything's better with more butter put that on top and then you stick it in the oven and you bake it at 350 or until it's kind of crispy at the top right you know that you can tell just don't burn the cornflakes so um that's it and i let it sit out for a little bit um 
so that it just gets a chance to um, congeal a little bit before it, so that it, when you slice it, it actually does slice nicely into pieces. And that's my Kugel. Sweet. Uh, honey. It sounds good. And do we get to see it? Oh, sorry, Linda. No, no, yeah, no. Sorry. I, have, I have a question. I then, yeah, I, yeah. I, then I'm hoping that everybody will open it up for more questions. Um, when you marinate it, do you marinate it in the pan or in the bowl? In the bowl. I'm going to keep it like this and I'm going to keep the cover on and then just keep it in the refrigerator in the bowl. And you don't mm -hmm. think the noodles will get soggy after three days? Well, I maybe I won't do three days. I'll probably bake this actually. What's tomorrow? Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, Wednesday. I'll probably bake it Tuesday. I won't. So if you need to do this ahead of time, what you could do is bake just the noodles. Then when you go to reheat it, sprinkle the cornflakes and the sugar and cinnamon mixture with your dabs of butter and reheat it so it'll get crispy. What you don't want to do is put the cornflakes on before because those will get soggy. Yeah. So, so you have what some about, flexibility. Yeah. You don't, you don't ever make it and then slice it and freeze it and reheat it or something? You can't do that? I, you know, I know the freezer is our friend, but I'm not a big fan of freezer stuff. Yeah. I feel like it, I don't know. It's like, it's like you want that smell too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going through the house, there's just something about that, That's just fair. like the onions and the right and the celery and all that smell. So awesome. Yeah. So no, I'm sorry. I went out on you guys. I did not do the full version because I was trying to be efficient. And so now I've made one of three kugels that I'll be making on Wednesday. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do. We have a little extra time. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Sure. I'm gonna do awesome. just one one last quick. Uh, recipe um, that I just was thinking about. You know, I grew up um, going off into Cleveland with my mom's family or to the Catskills to Monticello with my dad's family. And we often were in the Catskills and there was a lot of smoked fish there, just like generally, like it wasn't a high holiday thing or like a Shabbos thing. It was like whatever the day of the week was, there was like smoked fish. But at that point in my life, I didn't eat smoked fish. I don't know if other people also didn't eat smoked fish when you were growing up. It was like a thing that I had to grow into. I think it was like post-college, I started eating smoked fish. So I'm always feeling like a little bit behind. I'm generally a late bloomer. And I think that's especially true with my smoked fish consumption. So um, I love smoked fish because it's um, there's so much flavor packed into it. You can just do so much with it. You can, um, you know, smoked fish, particularly smoked white fish can be a great addition if you're making a, um, a fish chowder. Of course, we know there's like smoked haddock chowder. So the smoked fish that I got is just this very simple smoked white fish. I think I got it at um, Whole Foods or Whole Foods 365, $10, you know, if you get whole, if you try to get white fish salad, when you go to a bagel shop, it's like 30 or $40 a pound. It's such a scam. So treat yourself $10, get a thing. You got it there. You smoke it yourself, Nancy. Wow. Nancy's you're smoking yourself. Okay. Well, I, I don't do fish. I do turkey. I do turkey. Okay. You do your own turkey. Okay. Well, you can make a turkey salad. Um, so the four ingredients in this, hold on a second. So the four ingredients we have is just these like little, the most adorable little chives that I diced before. Um, you know, you just line them up and then tiny little chives are so cute. Lemon zest, just the outside, stay away from the pith, the white part, you don't want that. Pith is our enemy. Um, and then I took off the white fish. It took me probably 30 seconds. It's very fast. You want to just like take off the whole skin and then work from the top of the backbone out so that you don't get any of the, um, any of the bones. Bones can be very unpleasant. You don't want to have to like call 911 when you have someone over for breakfast. That's like the situation you don't need in your life. Um, probably they're already going to be having a heart attack from that amazing kugel, that sweet kugel with like half a stick of butter per person. I love that. <laughs> and then the last ingredient, which also is totally optional, but I went to get um, creme fraiche today at Sprouts, but they did not have it. So I got a little sour cream. So it's like a poor man's creme fraiche. It's like creme fraiche-ish. So I'm just going to add the white fish. White fish. Zest. Chives. And then I think probably about two, two tablespoons, maybe two and a half tablespoons of the sour cream. 
and then mix it up. And this is like a very nice item to have at your table. It's a luxury item. And I think recently we were at an event where um, there wasn't enough smoked fish for people. There was one person in particular who was just so irritated about that. And you know what? I felt a lot of solidarity with that person because when you want smoked fish, you like, you really want it. You know, you don't want like a, like a little sliver. That's why when I make gravlax, I always try to make a lot of it so people can really luxuriate it. And that's what's fun about making your own smoked fish salad at home is you don't have to spend $40 a pound. And so I have this nice big bowl here of smoked fish. And of course, you know, if you have more people, you might want more, but we're going to put this um, just on top of our salad tonight. We're gonna make a salad with just, you know, like a very light lemon vinaigrette um, dressing and we'll put some of this white fish salad. And this is just nice to have on your table um, for breakfast. And I'm thinking in particular, I wanna dedicate this smoked fish to my dear friend, Jill Birnbaum, who passed away. Jill Birnbaum, a blessed memory, who always did a breakfast with smoked fish. So may it be that you um, all just like have a little smoky fish if you like it. If you still are not someone who likes smoked fish, which I know, I know you're out there and we still love you. That's okay, we still love you. What do you think the, um, the delis used that make, it's like very rich and creamy. Is it mayonnaise in their white fish salad or is it? I think that they do, but honestly it's, um, white fish is so fatty. It's, it's, I think it's a disservice. It doesn't need it. Yeah, I this don't think it fresh, does either. It's so like, you, you basically, it's just like the most, tiny amount just so that it helps to bind it. You could even really do it without it, without the creme fraiche. The chives and the lemon zest, I think just give it a brightness because you have to cut through also that, the fattiness um, of it. Oh, and the last thing, just because sometimes we like to share other products, I'm sure everybody knows about Mary's. Does everybody know Mary's? Do you guys have these? I think they're good. Those of us that are like the low carb humans of the universe. Um, they have all different flavors and they're so tasty. And like, sometimes you just like want to sink your teeth into a crusty bagel, but then you're like, do I really want to sink my teeth into a crusty bagel? But the answer is almost always, yes, I do want to sink my teeth into a crusty bagel, but then you've wisely not allowed bagels into your home. But then you look, oh, I have Mary's and she gives me some of that crusty without the bagel. So Mary's, she has many different flavors. She's our friend. Okay. Um, should we open it up to see if there's questions? We have questions for Linda. And Shauna's going to show her plated um, salads. Yeah, let's see it, Shauna. Mm, that looks good. Let me yeah, so the salad, and then I use the sweet potato cr uh, crackers from Costco, and uh, <laughs> gluten free, and then the and then the faux chop liver. So enjoy. Thank you, Shauna. Um, I can show my biscuits just what they're supposed to look like, and then I'll put them back in the oven. Great. How much? How long do they need to be in there? Thirty-five minutes. Mm -hmm. At what temperature? But they're getting close. Oh wait, let me come around here. I just wanted you to see. I don't know if you can see. There's like holes in the top. And that's like pockets of air. I see them, Linda. Yeah. And how brown do you do you like it? I like it brown, a little browner. And Yellow. then you have to really let it cool before you cut it. And I've learned to cut it in smaller portions because two sticks of butter are in here. <laughs> butter, there's kind of a butter theme tonight. You could butter your bagel and then put the white fish salad on it. That's one an additional butter option if you have extra butter that you haven't figured out to use. Um, Deb, any last thoughts that you want to add on your dish or any of the dishes? I'm just inspired. I think what we did today was pretty awesome because it was easy. This was not, I mean, that that marinated vegetable salad, I mean, amazing. That's that's a great dish. So um, and I remember my grandmother making the chopped liver. I do, but she doctor, She always did doctor it up with onions and hard boiled egg and all that kind of stuff. So great memories, great, uh, great food and uh, just happy new year, everybody. 
Is there, just for the folks, thank you, Deb, are there folks on the call who are in particular thinking about one dish that either you will be having or won't be having, but are remembering from your childhood in this moment as we're, as we're doing this breakfast special? Marilyn Ross, let's hear it. Jello molds, Jello. layered Jello molds with crushed pineapple, sour cream. That's the Cleveland side of the family. But are you, we have other Cleveland here, people representing. Just fruit cocktail. Um, is that, but are you missing it? You're missing visually it or you're missing the taste of it? Just curious. Both. Both, Both. okay. All right, yes. that's fun. Any other things? I miss a very fancy poached salmon that was in the shape of a fish with that was had like the scales were of sliced cucumber. It was like the most delicious thing in the world. Who made that? I don't know. It, it was always at the Kretzer's home. And I, that, that's where we went for break the fast. So um, I think they had someone make it. That might have been them. a, that sounds like a catered item, doesn't it? But it, it was just, sounds it was so good. awesome. That's awesome. That sounds great. Yeah, Nancy, you had something. I was just gonna say, I, my, my, I was, Deb and I were talking last weekend at uh, Tashli, and I thought she was, I said the heart attack, Kugel, because that's what I thought you were getting, that's what you had talked about making. Um, historically, I mean, we call, sort of call it, I think my mother got the recipe at a funeral about 50 or 60, probably 60 years ago, uh, maybe more. Uh, and that's the, it's we've sort of just called it the Desser noodle kugel, but it's the heart attack kugel with a cube of butter, a cube of cream cheese, um, like a cup and a half of milk, um, not much sugar, like quarter, half a cup of sugar, but like four eggs and it, everything goes in the blender and you just pour it over your cooked noodles and bake it for an hour at 350 and put some Yum. cornflake, you know, crushed cornflakes on top. This year I actually bought, because I refuse to, I have um, a limited pantry space and the only size cornflake box was like, you know, half of the pantry. And so I bought already pre-crushed cornflake crumbs, I'm embarrassed to say, but I made it for some cousins yesterday. I went to a, a, uh, a, a late Rosh Hashanah brunch with some family or an early break fast i love or that it's good to break the fast, fast before you even fast it really right, you right. get you ready i like that nancy you're amazing um, all right let's see did lois did you have something did any other people want to add one last uh one oh, last item I, have, I have a i have a recipe for a vegetarian chopped liver that's made with lasur canned lasur peas and walnuts but i don't have it handy to share with all of you but i if you want it, I can get it for you. And it, yeah. it tastes like chopped liver. I think um, Tammy Tammy made it for a, a special Oneg. I think Deborah, it was for your parents' anniversary. And I got the recipe and, and passed it. I made it and then I passed it around. Uh, so I have that one. Um, but what's wrong with regular chopped liver? <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. my grandma made it. I remember her chopping it. She had a wooden bowl and a, a mezzaluna chopper. And, and that's how she would chop the liver and everything. And it was the I best. The grinder. <laughs> no. Yeah, my, in a wooden my bowl. grandmother had the silver oh, grinder. Yep. Oh, mine used the bowl. So amazing. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you both for doubling down on the chopped liver to affirm those of us that do love. But when, and you can love both types, right? We don't have to only have allegiance for one. It's a new year, is, it's a new time. I think the, the chicken fat is what makes the chopped liver liver, the real, the, the real. The schmaltz, liver. yeah, yeah. What's the name, dad, what's the name of that restaurant on the Lower East Side where they used to have the chicken schmaltz on the table? No, it wasn't right. No, 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 it was, it was uh, on um, not Stanton on Essex uh, downstairs, right. and they have a Stammies. band. Sammy's, yeah. Sammy's, Sammy's, Sammy's Romanian, Sammy's, Sammy's Romanian. Romanian. Oh, so yeah. like a like a maple syrup decanter on every table, yeah. it would just be full of schmaltz. It was and so, so good for you. It was very good for you. So they would come over with the chopped liver, 
just with the livers kind of cut up and then with the um, caramelized onions. And then they would do this very dramatic pouring of the schmaltz and then beat it right in front of you. So it was came out and it was just like steaming fresh chopped liver. It was very good. You probably could only go there twice in a lifetime because. Sounds like guacamole at the table, but chopped liver style. I actually did go there with my friend, Jill Birnbaum, with my cousin, um, Steve, Steven Engelson. And they'll give you, you can, you can get a bottle of Absolute in a block of ice. Anyways, it was quite a night. But, um, but then there was Rosh Hashanah and time for Chuva. So that's fine. It's fine. So, all right, everybody. So good to see you. Cantor Cates, anything else that you want to add? Can you, do you want to um, sing us into the, um, into Yom Kippur? Is there something you want to offer? Um, Tika te. May you all be blessed and written in the book of life for a really wonderful year in, that is coming. Amen. That's the best way to go into the into Yom Kippur. Thank you, Cantor Cates, and thank you, Deb and Shauna and Jocelyn, if you're there in the background supporting your mom. Thank you. And Barry could have been more disruptive, but he wasn't. That was awesome, right? That was really good. He showed a lot of restraint. And um, just all of you, Shana Tova, it's so great to be with all of you. Yeah, this have is a fun. great, thank you. Have a really sweet new year. Thanks, everybody. And a delicious Bye. breakfast. Shana everyone. Shana Thank you, everyone. Shana everybody. Bye-bye.